Okay, here's section two. We're going to talk, now we have some vocabulary to be able to talk about in terms of pitch. High, low. Uh, fast duration, slow durations. Okay. Let's start talking about one of the most important parts of this, the concept of this class. The difference between a swing feel and a straight feel. Those of you guys who come from kind of experience with rock and roll, straight feels are like... If I swung that, it turns into this. Here we go. Can you hear the difference between this and this? This is straight. This is swung. One, a two, a three, a four, a one. Like long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. That's about the rhythms. Jazz is a feel that's almost always swung. It's really like one, two, three, 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 one. And I skip the two. One, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one. So it's like there's three subdivisions in each beat. And I skip the middle one. As opposed to two subdivisions in each beat, and I play them both. Straight feel, swung feel. If I played a scale, and then I swing it. Here's the difference. Changing things into that swing feel really made a big difference in the history of what be was before blues. No, sorry, not even that. What was before march tempos or ragtime and then swing in it gave it this uniquely jazzy rhythmic feel. It's a big deal, so I want to make sure you guys got that straight. Now, before we had a thing called jazz, we did have a folk style called blues that was going on in the South, but all kind of different places. Even in the big cities as things were coming north. Um, blues has a lot of characteristic musical aspects to it. They're not all always there, sometimes, sometimes not. But there's some aspects about blues that are un unique to its style. And by the way, for a lot of people, blues is the very first uniquely American folk style. As your text tells you over and over, these are all descended from, either directly descended from African styles or African adaptations of European styles that had been going on at the time. This is all great stuff. Um, there's things about the blues that happen a lot, though. There's particular ideas about um, vocal, vocal sounding inflections. <laughs> Bends, <laughs> making the instrument imitate what a vocal might sound like, especially a, a moaning, sad, bluesy lyric might have that sort of sound to it. Um, even there's even scales that make it specific. These extra notes, if I played them. Together. The crying aspect is really important, so make sure you hear bent notes. Um, that, and that's pitch bending, so I'm bending the pitches. Uh, let's see, there's a form thing that's really a common thing in blues. Um, and the form is a 12 bar form. By the way, there are also 8 bar forms, there are 16 bar forms in its original incarnation in the 30s. Sometimes guys would play 13-bar blues, some players would play 7-bar blues. They were just accompanying their vocals. And if they wanted to change the melody of what they're singing, and it's a little shorter, then it's a little shorter. It took us a while before we thought we were making up rules. Anyway, here's the idea. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those are 
12 measures of time. There were particular chord colors or progressions or changes along the way of those, eight, those 12 bars, right? This chord, for like four measures of time, and then it changed to this character. For the fifth and sixth, seventh and eighth measures. Then we had this guy, and he came home to where we started. It's a 12 bar form. 12 bar form was super common in blues tunes. And at the beginning of jazz history, that form, the 12 bar form, and to a lesser extent, 8 bar form and 16 bar form, those were the building blocks. Those are the places that the jazz guys of the teens and the 20s started. They pulled tunes out of that simple, folky construction, added a swingier, swingier feel to it, and improvisation and made something out of that. Okay, 12 bar form. Improvisation, you guys. Here's the basic idea. I make stuff up on the time, but it's not free. It's not out of the blue. It's in a, it has a form to it, and often it was this 12-bar form. So let me again play this for you. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Three, four, five. this form. Did you still hear those chords going by? Let me count it for you. One, two, three, four, one, two, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You still hear the chords go by, even though I was improvising individual notes into a melodic contour. Improvisation, 12 bar form, blues as the beginning of jazz going forward. Now, before we had a thing called jazz, we did have a folk style called blues that was going on in the South, but all kind of different places. Even in the big cities, as things were coming north. Um, blues has a lot of characteristic musical aspects to it. They're not all always there, sometimes, sometimes not. But there's some aspects about blues that are un unique to its style. And by the way, for a lot of people, blues is the very first uniquely American folk style. As your text tells you over and over, these are all descended from, either directly descended from African styles or African adaptations of European styles that had been going on at the time. This is all great stuff. Um, there's things about the blues that happen a lot though. There's particular ideas about um, vocal, vocal sounding inflections. <laughs> what bends, <laughs> making the instrument imitate what a vocal might sound like, especially a, a moaning, sad, bluesy lyric might have that sort of sound to it. Um, even there's even scales that make it specific. <laughs> extra notes. If I played them together, the crying aspect is really important. So make sure you hear bent notes. Um, that, and that's pitch bending, so I'm bending the pitches. Uh, let's see, there's a form thing that's really a common thing in blues. Um, and the form is a 12 bar form. By the way, there are also 8-bar forms, there are 16-bar forms in its original incarnation in the 30s. Sometimes guys would play 13-bar blues, some players would play 7-bar blues. They were just accompanying their vocals. And if they wanted to change the melody of what they're singing, and it's a little shorter, then it's a little shorter. It took us a while before we thought we were making up rules. Anyway, here's the idea. One, two, three. 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Those are twelve measures of time. There were particular chord colors or progressions, chord changes along the way of those eight, those twelve bars, right? This chord for like four measures of time, and then it changed to this character for the fifth and sixth, seventh and eighth measures. Then we had this guy. bar form. 12 bar form was super common in blues tunes and at the beginning of jazz history that form, the 12 bar form and to a lesser extent 8 bar form and 16 bar form, those were the building blocks, those are the places that the jazz guys of the teens and the 20s started. They pulled tunes out of that simple folky construction, added a swingier, swingier feel to it and improvisation and made something out of that. Okay, 12 bar form. Improvisation guys. Here's the basic idea. I make stuff up on the time, but it's not free. It's not out of the blue. It's in a, it has a form to it, and often it was this 12-bar form. So let me again play this for you. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Three, four, five. this form. Did you still hear those chords going by? Let me count it for you. One, two, three, four, one, two, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You still hear the chords go by, even though I was improvising individual notes into a melodic contour. Improvisation, 12-bar form, blues as the beginning of jazz going forward.